Hey everyone, Matt here with Nightrun Studio and welcome to another Let's Make a Tower Defense Game in Unity video. In our last video we got our enemies set up so that we could spawn in waves with different enemies and that sort of thing. However, we don't have any way to actually spawn in defenders to help defend our tower. So in this video we're going to create a button system where you can push buttons in order to spawn in different defenders. Let's get started. We've done a little work with user interfaces already in this series, and if you missed the video on health bars, you can be sure to catch that one to get some details. That said, if you missed it, don't worry, you should be able to follow along just fine. So we're going to start by just right-clicking in the hierarchy, going to UI, and we're actually going to add a canvas to start. If you did the other video, you already have a canvas, but I prefer to actually have separate canvases for different types of UI. I find that it keeps the canvas clear and also seems to work better for performance, as opposed to having one canvas that's really cluttered. I'm just going to rename this one. We'll make this our spawn canvas. At that point, I'm going to right click again, go to UI, and this time I'm going to add a panel. This part is purely aesthetic, so if you don't like it, you can skip this. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to move my game view over here like I did in the other video, so that as we make changes, we can see what it will actually look like. We then click our rec tool and just slide this panel down. I'm going to put mine at the bottom of my screen. You can play around with the appearance of it over here in the image component. I'm going to set mine to black. And you'll notice it is semi-transparent, so you can play with the alpha if you like in order to make that more opaque. With that done, I'm just going to right-click on the panel itself, and I'm going to add a UI Button Text Mesh Pro. The Text Mesh Pro version of Button just allows us to write using Text Mesh Pro on it. And if you haven't used this before, you will need to import the TMP Essentials. It is essential that you get the essentials, otherwise you won't be able to see any text on your screen. I also like to add the extras as they give me more fonts to work with. At this point, you'll see a really ugly little button up here. But before we deal with that, we're going to look at our canvas. In the canvas scaler, you'll see that it's currently set to constant pixel size, which means that the pixels are always the same size. The problem with this is that if you're working on high resolution, you're going to end up with really little buttons, and they'll be larger on smaller resolution. I prefer to scale with screen size. That way, no matter what screen resolution you're working with, the buttons take up about the same percentage of your screen. Now you may, like me, notice that that really messes things up. My panel disappeared and the button's at the bottom of the screen. Not to worry. You can see here that I'm working in full HD, 1920 by 1080, so we just need to set our reference resolution to match what we're looking at in the game view, and things should go back to normal. At this point, I'm just going to move my button over into the left corner here, and then grab my rec tool and resize it. I'm going to get a nice big chunky button here. I'm going to rename this one to Archer Button, as down the road we'll want to have a different button for every defender. And then I'm going to click on the Text Mesh Pro, and here we can just put the name of what we're going to summon, in this case an Archer. You can also play around with your font. I'm going to go with Roboto. You can change your font size, color, that sort of thing. I'm going to head back to my button now, go to UI, and I'm going to add a image here as well. This is just so that I can make a portrait for each of my defenders that I have. I've already downloaded a portrait of this archer, and so if I go to the source image section here, I can just drag her in there. Now, obviously the sizing isn't quite right. I can fix this pretty easily by heading over to my rec transform for the image. I'm gonna click on the center and stretch thing here, and down in the bottom corner here, I'm just gonna make my anchor presets set to expand in both directions. You'll notice the anchors now go to the four corners of the image. I'm then going to hold down Option, I believe it's Control on PC, and click it again, and that will actually stretch the image. If you're having trouble with layering, figuring out whether the Text Mesh Pro or Image are on top, whichever one is lower in the hierarchy will appear above the other. Though I'm actually going to move my text all the way down below here, as I like the way it looks below the portrait. I'm also just going to change my coloring now to white so that it shows up. I'm just going to close up a couple of these tabs here to make things easier to read, and we're going to take a look at our button component. First thing we can do is we can change things so that when we interact with it, it changes color. You'll see that it's supposed to go gray when pressed. And mine is going gray, you can just barely tell here. But you'll also notice that it's only when I touch the background. My character portrait is actually blocking the raycast so that when I click on her, nothing's happening. If I head back here, I can change that by just going to my image and turning off raycast target. Now each time I press the button, even if it's on the character image, it goes a nice dark color. Now I'm just going to head into my scripts folder here, and I'm going to just create a new c -sharp script. This one will be called Defender Spawn, and this is what's going to do the actual work of spawning our defender into the game. 
going to start off by making a public method here, and it does need to be public, otherwise the button won't be able to find it. I'll call this spawn archer, and this will of course be the one that spawns the archer. If you like, you can also make some other placeholder ones for later, like for example spawn soldier, or whatever other defenders you think you might want to spawn into your game down the road. Perhaps the most important thing here is we need to let our script know what it's actually going to spawn in. So we'll make a public game object, and I'll call this one archer. We'll also need to know where we want to spawn the archer in, since it won't just be at the location of the button, as with our other spawning. So we'll make a transform, and we'll just call this spawn point. I'm just going to go into the spawn canvas here, where we can actually add this script, the defender spawner. Now it wants to know where the archer is, but we haven't actually made a prefab out of our archer yet. So I'm just going to click on my defender, and before I make the prefab, I'm just going to rename it. Let's call this one archer. Then we can drag her down into the prefab folder. You'll notice her name turns blue, so we know that the prefab's been made. At this point, we can delete it, as we don't need her to start off in the game. Now when we click on our spawn canvas, we can fill that archer box with our archer prefab. Now the other box wants to know where our spawn point is. I'm actually going to put this by our tower. And so I'm just going to right click in our hierarchy, create an empty game object. We'll call this one Defender Spawn Point. And then with the Transform tool, and I'm just going to add a gizmo to this. Let's give it a blue diamond so we can see where it is, and I'm going to move it right over top of the door. We can now feed that spawn point into this box here, and our Defender Spawner script will now know exactly where to spawn our archer. We can now work in our public spawn archer method here, where we can do the logic for spawning. Remember, in Unity we use instantiate when doing spawning, and it takes in three arguments. The first needs to know what it is we're spawning, that's our archer. Second, where we would like her to spawn, that's going to be our spawn point. And the spawn point itself just points to the transform, so that's not going to be enough information. We have to actually look specifically at the position line in the spawn point, so I'll put dot position. Finally, it wants to know our rotation. We don't have any special rotations, we'll just put quaternion.identity. Now we just need our button to actually call this method, which will then instantiate the defender at the tower with no rotation. Now we just need to hook up our button. So in Unity now, we can click on that archer button one more time. And down here, if you go down to the bottom, you'll see this on click section. I'm just going to hit plus to add what we want to happen on click. And for that box here, we just need to put in the script that we want it to talk to. That's on our spawn canvas. So I'm going to drag the spawn canvas in there, and it should be able to find the script we're looking for. The way we'll do that is by clicking on this drop-down box here that currently says no function. We'll look for the script name, ours is Defender Spawner, and then we need to find the method that spawns the archer, which is called Spawn Archer. Now our button is set up so that when we click it, it will call that method in the script. I'm just going to do a little bit of changes here to the color of the button, just purely aesthetic. So now when the game starts, there's no archer in the game, the enemies begin spawning, and each time we click on the archer button, an archer spawns into place. Looking pretty good. <laughs> now, now we do have some issues. There's some problems with colliders, um, and we've definitely got work left to do, but we're now able to spawn in enemies to fight the hordes that are attacking our tower. All right, I hope you found that one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like, subscribe, or just leave a comment down below. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.